I remember going and sitting in my room and just freaking out. And I thought to myself, if this God they talk about is real, if you're really up there, you know, well, listen to me right now. I, I need you, you know, and I, and I just I just prayed like, hey, like, show me what I got to do and I'll do it. Mixed martial artist Benil Dariush discovered a true relationship with God after a lifetime of cultural Christianity. And it was then that he learned that Jesus Christ was the only way to find true peace with God. And I was like, oh my gosh, this all makes sense. There's a reason why we follow Jesus. When I understood it, then a new battle started. It's like, am I going to allow that? Am I going to let Jesus be the sacrifice or is it going to be my good works? He was trying to show me like, it's just never going to happen. You don't have what it takes to stand in front of God, but Jesus did. Benil Dariush stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighs in at 155 pounds, and is a professional mixed martial artist. He's currently ranked ninth in the world in the lightweight division of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and he's a committed follower of Jesus Christ. Benil is also our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I'm Ethan Jones. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Benil won fights by being a good fighter. So he struggled with accepting that he couldn't win his way into heaven by being a good person. Billy Graham talked about that. If I was saved by my own goodness, I'd get up to heaven and walk around and brag and say, look what I did to get here. I was a good boy. But we're all sinners. None of us deserve to be in heaven. The only way to enter heaven is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you'll hear Billy Graham explain more about that later in the episode. Or you can learn more about it right now, online or over the phone. Either visit us at findpeacewithgod.net, that's findpeacewithgod.net, or call our 24-hour prayer line. The number is 888-388-2683. That's 888-388-2683. Both that number and the website are in the show notes. One more thing, we think you're going to like this episode of GPS. If you do, go ahead and share it on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever platform you prefer, and let other people know about it. When you do, tag us at Billy Graham Radio. GPS. God. People. Stories. So we grew up in Iran. Uh, Assyrians are a small group that in Iran, a, a small minority that are allowed to be Christian. Benil Dariush and his family had the freedom to publicly believe in Jesus. But Benil says it was mostly a cultural Christianity steeped in tradition. And, you know, we had church Fridays and Sundays. But, like, I never went inside a church because it was it's, it's old school. It's an Aramaic church where, you know, you, you, have, uh, you have all the traditions and you do all these things. And they would speak in old Aramaic, but I don't understand it. So, like, I didn't really go inside and sit down and kind of get, get the gospel. The Iranian government allows Assyrian Christians to practice their faith and even to be open about it in public, but that's where the freedoms for their faith end. We're not allowed to share it with anybody else. Like, if you're if you're Assyrian, you can be Christian, but you're not allowed to share it with, uh, let's say, someone who's Muslim. But if we do, it was a death sentence. The Dariush family worked hard to provide for themselves. Benil's dad worked in construction, and Benil, his older sister, and their mom worked on a family farm. While they were able to make ends meet, Benil's parents didn't see much opportunity for their children if they stayed in Iran. Eventually, they made the decision to move their family from Iran all the way to the United States. Unfortunately, they couldn't afford for everyone to move at the same time, so Benil's father went first, and then five years later, Benil, his mother, and his older sister joined him in Orange County, California. It was so different. Culture shock, man. Because I I lived on a farm. I spent every minute of my day outside, and then all of a sudden I'm spending every minute of the day inside, and then my, my aunt had a babysitting program that I would stay at, and I just, you know, hang out with these kids, and We were pretty much on the TV or video games all day, and that was really different. Benil and his sister were adjusting to their new life in America, and their family was finally reunited. Things were going great, or at least they thought so. 
While the kids may have been thriving, their parents were struggling to feel settled. That put a lot of tension on their marriage, and a year and a half after moving to the U.S., Benil's parents got divorced. It was just so difficult to just, you know, we had spent years without my dad because I, we were in Iran, and he went before us so he could bring us there. And then we got there, and like a year and a half later, they're, they're like, okay, this isn't working out. We're going to split. It was, it was heartbreaking. Moving to a new country, learning the ins and outs of a new culture, and now his parents' divorce. It was a lot to handle. Benil and his sister moved in with their mom, and they tried once again to find their new normal. Sports quickly became one of Benil's favorite pastimes. Over the next several years, he would spend most of his time outside playing soccer. But during his freshman year in college, he found something that would capture his attention more than anything had before. Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I was like, I'll try jiu-jitsu. It'll be fun. It'll be a nice activity. And I really did it just to stay in shape in college. And then I fell in love with jiu-jitsu. I went from training, you know, once a day, every couple of, uh, a couple of days to training every day, and then two times a day. Benil was hooked, and he was a natural. Before he knew it, he was competing in jiu-jitsu tournaments and winning. Over the next several years, he won numerous competitions on the world stage, and eventually, a coach suggested he try his hand at mixed martial arts. Benil started training, and shortly after, got a call from one of his coaches. He calls me and he says, hey, I got a fight for you. And I was like, okay. Uh, I got a little scared right there when he's like, I got a fight for you. But Benil accepted the fight. And then he said, it's a professional fight. So you got to go get your medicals and things like that. done." And then I got really scared. I was like, a professional fight? Why, why are we doing that? Benil's coach had his reasons. But in short, to ensure that Benil would have medical coverage from the state commission, the fight had to be on a professional level. I had my first fight when I was 20, and it was a mess. It was, it was an absolute mess. I barely won by a, a split decision, but I loved it, so I just, I just stuck with it. So what started as a way to stay in shape during college had now snowballed into a string of professional mixed martial arts fights. And Benil's success in those fights gave him the opportunity to train with some very high-level coaches. I got the best of the best put in my hands, I, I, literally laid out in, in front of me. My jiu-jitsu coach, Homo Bahal, one of the best uh, guys in the world, right? So I have one of the best jiu-jitsu guys in the world, introduces me to Rafael Cordero, one of the best um, striking coaches in the world. From there, I meet Mark Munoz. He's a great wrestling coach who introduces me to a guy named Jacob Harmon, who introduces me to Joshua Holiday, who was a big time wrestler. Those coaches were some of the best in the world. Suddenly, Benil was surrounded by people who could take his career to the next level. But of all of those coaches, the most important one would prove to be Joshua Holiday, who was not only an excellent wrestler, but also the pastor of a local church. He really had tried to ask me to come to church multiple times, and, uh, and I never did. And you know what's crazy? His the church that he was at, it was walking distance from my house. And I just was like, nah, I got practice, but I'll maybe, maybe one day. And then I, I'd always say that, and I, I just kind of uh, brush him off. It's not that Benil didn't believe in God, but he was fine to let him sit on the back burner for a while. For the next several months, Benil put all of his energy into training and competing, and he was finding success in his sport. But MMA and jiu-jitsu competitions weren't paying any bills. And after a conversation with his mom... Benil realized that's exactly what he needed to do. My mom came to me and said, like, hey, we don't have what we used to have. We hit some uh, financial problems. What are we going to do? And when she said we, she was really looking at me. And I just thought to myself, what is this woman saying right now? Like, I, I don't I don't know. And, and, and I, I just I blurted it out. Oh, mom, it's going to be OK. I'll figure it out. I just blurted it out. And I had no clue. Up to this point in his life, Benil had never seen any real need for God. But now, feeling pressure to provide for his family and not seeing any other good options, Benil decided he might need to turn to God. I remember going and sitting in my room and just freaking out. And I thought to myself, if this God they talk about is real, if you're really up there, you know, well, listen to me right now. I, I need you, you know, and I, and I, just, I just prayed like, hey, like, show me what I got to do and I'll do it. Not long after that prayer, Benil got a phone call from one of his coaches. He was being offered another fight, but he didn't feel like he could focus on training when he needed to be focused on supporting his family financially. This fight was different, though, and his coach was insistent that Benil hear him out. 
And he just kind of started going over what it was. He's like, well, it's a fight in Brazil. I always wanted to go to Brazil, never been to Brazil. What's more, the list of other fighters who were going to be competing at and attending the event was huge. I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds really good, but I can't. And then he's like, this person's going to be there. This person's going to be there. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, but I can't. And then he's finally like, and they're going to pay you. And I was like, wait, what? They're going to pay me? Because normally, even though I was a pro fighting back then, I, most of the time I had to pay between paying for like uh, medicals and all the things I need to do my licenses. I ended up paying them. And he's like, oh, they're going to pay you this much. I was like, wait, what? They're going to pay for everything and pay me that much? It's like, this can't be real. So as soon as I agreed, a month later, I was in Brazil. I fought the guy in Brazil. He was the hometown hero. I won the fight in the first round. Benil came back from Brazil with another win under his belt. And more importantly, a check. I was like, here you go, mom. Here's some money. We're good, right? And she's like, yeah, we're good for this month, maybe. But, you know, we have next month and the month after that. And we have that and we have this. And I just, you know, my heart sank again and I freaked out again. And I went back to my room and I basically did the same thing. I, I said, God, if that was, if that was you do it again, if, if that was you do it again. And, you know, he did. Not only did Benil get more opportunities to fight, he also started training other people in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And all of a sudden I had a steady income where it wasn't enough to be comfortable, but it, uh, but it was enough to keep me going till the next fight. Praying for God to come through became a common practice for Benil. Not only was God providing financially, but Benil's success in MMA was making competing in the sport a viable career. So we started looking for more fights, for more professional fights, and I couldn't find fights anymore. Nobody wanted to fight me. Nobody wanted to risk the record. And so my manager was thinking, well, if this is the case, let's try to go for the UFC. And the UFC said, not enough fights, not enough experience. Um, he's not ready. Things like that. And then out of nowhere, they call us back and say, oh, wait, we have a short notice fight. Does he want to do a short notice fight? Let's pause for a minute. This is a huge deal. The Ultimate Fighting Championship, UFC for short, is the largest and most successful mixed martial arts promoter in the world. And I said, of course I want to do a short notice fight. I, uh, please. I jumped in on a short notice fight and then I had my first fight. I beat him in a minute and a half. No one was questioning Benil's experience or abilities anymore. He was in. God's faithfulness to provide was so evident in his life that Benil says he started to feel guilty. You know, God, what do you want from me? I, I, I didn't even call him Lord. I didn't, I, I didn't say Heavenly Father. I didn't know any of that. I was just like, dude, what do you want? I don't know how much more I can ask without just feeling like, like garbage. What do you want? And, and the first thing that came to my mind was Josh Holliday. You remember Josh. He's the wrestling coach who doubled as a pastor. It was clear to Benil that he could no longer deny his coach's invitation to visit his church. So he gave him a call. I was like, you know, I'd like to come to church. But the hardest part about going to church was it was when I would step in, you know, I'd, I'd have this voice in my head that would say, hey, you don't belong here. Like, this is not for you. This is, you know, it, you know, the enemy was speaking really loud back then. And every word that, that Josh spoke uh, and, and from, from, you know, every word that he read out of the Bible, it was it was kind of against my nature. It was against the things I was doing. So it, it, I felt really uncomfortable. But at the same time, I was so convicted to stay. I, I was not going to leave, you know. I was sure this is where he was telling me to go. This is where I'm supposed to be. And so I stayed and I kind of fought through that awkwardness and, and uncomfortableness until I opened up my own Bible and it changed my life. And I said, oh, I'm going to finish this. So I went through it all and I, I started to understand the gospel and, and I gave my life to the Lord. God was no longer on the back burner. Benil realized that God had been leading him to this moment. All of the opportunity, all of the financial provision, it was all about Benil's heart. That's what God was after. But God didn't stop there. Using Benil's time in the Bible and sermons from Benil's pastor, Josh, God started revealing things about himself to Benil. I remember Josh was going over a message and, and basically going over atonement and, and the purpose of it and, and how there's no way we could satisfy uh, God without it. And that was the day. And I was like, oh my gosh, this all makes sense. There's a reason why we follow Jesus. When I understood it, 
then a new battle started is like, am I going to allow that? Am I going to allow God? Am I going to let Jesus be the sacrifice or is it going to be my good works? Because I was like, okay, maybe God wants me to come here to learn how to do good works. But it, it wasn't. He was trying to show me like, it's, it's just never going to happen. You don't have what it takes to, to, uh, to stand in front of God, but Jesus did. With that realization, Beniel had found a new sense of purpose in his life. He was also a successful professional athlete at the top of his game, and he was providing for his family. By this point in his career, Beniel was ranked in the top 10 in the lightweight division. But just as he had reached what seemed to be the top of the world, Beniel hit a wall. I got injured. I, I started having some neck problems that I just thought I could push through without actually treating it. You know, I was actually close to retiring. I thought maybe uh, retiring was the right call because my neck got so bad, I would be in in, uh, in training and uh, somebody would just touch my chin, barely just light sparring and my arm would go numb or I would just fall. It was, uh, I, we didn't, I, I didn't think it was, it, it was going to, it was going to get better. So, I, and I thought to myself, well, if I can't, if I can't take a punch, what's the point of fighting? And I didn't have a win for two years. Benil didn't understand. So much had gone right and he had worked so hard to get so far. Was it all really supposed to come to a screeching halt? I remember just praying to God and, and trying to kind of get an idea of what he wanted from me at this point. And I, I thought to myself, like, Lord, what are you, what are you looking for here? What's, what's the, what's going on here? And and all I could hear from him was the desert. I, I kept seeing myself in the desert. I kept reading about Abraham in the desert. I kept reading about Jacob too. And then I, I remember uh, Jesus in the desert. And, and I just, I don't get it, Lord, but okay, we're here. I'm going to stay here. Eventually, Benil remembered why God had been faithful. It wasn't for Benil's bank account or his MMA record. It was for his heart. Even though I was going through the hardest time of my life, I felt the closest to God. I felt, I know, I, I was like, Lord, I know you're just giving me the desert. You're just showing me the desert, but I feel your presence. You know, I felt his presence so strong in all the things I was doing. And then uh, God reset me. With his priorities realigned, Benil recovered from his injuries and he's currently on a six fight winning streak. But Benil says while he was in that desert period, God taught him something that would change his life. I felt really humbled because I always thought you had to be a winner. You had to be this to be, to be loved. And it was just another reminder. Like I, I, I um, you know, this is a battle for me. This is going to be a battle for me for the rest of my life. Winning is in God. I know who my God is. Benil Dariush knows what it means to fight, and more often than not, he knows what it means to win. But you heard him say it earlier, there is no amount of wins or good works that will make us good enough to stand in front of God. And for that, we need Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a perfect life, and he was God in the flesh. And then he died to pay the penalty for your sins and mine. Now it's up to you to accept that free gift of forgiveness he offers and to begin a relationship with him. We can tell you more about that at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. Benil doesn't run from fights, but in just a minute, you're going to hear him talk about running from God. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. If I was saved by my own goodness... I'd get up to heaven and walk around and brag and say, look what I did to get here. I was a good boy. But we're all sinners. None of us deserve to be in heaven. Billy Graham. God says that we're to be as holy as he is. I can't be as holy as God. So what happens? Christ came and died on the cross and shed his blood to provide for me a holiness that I do not naturally have. And he provides a cloth of holiness for me and righteousness that I don't deserve. 
You're saved by the grace of God, for by grace are we saved through faith in that not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Come to Christ. He will give you a new strength and a new power and a new joy and a new peace and a purpose for living. You can begin experiencing all that Jesus Christ offers right now by surrendering your heart to Him. If you'd like to talk with someone about that, call our 24-hour prayer line. The number is 888-388-2683. That's 888-388-2683. Benil Dariush is our guest on this episode of GPS. One of my favorite things about Benil's story is how God created a pathway for Benil to have a deeper relationship with Jesus. I feel like God has call, has been calling me my whole life. I haven't listened my whole life. And on top of that, you know, the times where I was just barely saved out of this or that, like the, I, I could have been in big trouble and, and just how everything was set up so I can just be there and finally listen. I think God has been calling me my whole life. And just like Jacob, I've been running away from him my whole life. And then finally, finally, I listened and I heard him and I said, okay, God, I'm going to hold on. It's so incredible. Every time I think about it, it uh, makes me see how great he is. Since the start of his career, Benil Dariush has earned an impressive record as a mixed martial artist. But now that he's a follower of Christ, he realizes there's more to life than your wins and losses. We really appreciate Benil sharing his story with us, and we appreciate you for listening. I'm Ethan Jones. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Remember to share this episode and tag us at Billy Graham Radio. You never know who might need to hear it and how it could help them. GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. 